Hey you guys, welcome to In My Own Thoughts. It has been a while since I have done anything like this. Um, so I've done a video, so I've even thought about doing a video. It's been so long. Um, and really, the last time I did a video, it was before I got pregnant. And um, ever since after that, doing a video takes so much. So much planning and so much, um, like just even like, the capacity that you have is a little bit different um, when you're doing a video because you need to figure out the timing and so it can be a little bit stressful um, so I kind of wanted to wait it out until after I was done with the first trimester um, and just if I'm feeling a little bit better or whatever and I really wanted to also talk about a, a topic that was meaty a little bit um, a topic that um, I think is uh, prominent to society and I for a while I was thinking of um, kind of like doing some uh, book bookish topics um, because I am an avid avid um, reader but reader of certain classics and of certain times um, and I actually don't read as much as I want to um, but I've been getting back into that um, and as some of you guys know from my previous videos, um, I used to be a linguistics major in college, but I also took a bunch of literature classes just because I loved it. And I did a lot of reading then too because I loved it. Um, and so I definitely am more focused on specific things. Um, with, uh, reading, I'm, um, gonna talk about specific books. Now, I will say from the very beginning that if you have a specific book that you want me to read or look into and um, and you're like, hey, can you do a review on this or whatever, I will totally do that. Um, so, I think this will add some variety to my channel. I think this will add some um, depth to it um, and just some more meaty topics. But in order to do that, you need time to figure it out. I've just taken my time with that. And so today I wanted to talk about 1984, George Orwell's uh, classic, classic book. Um, and really this book I was wanting to read for a long time. There are times where I'm like, I should have run, I should have read this so long ago. Um, but I just, you know, never really got to it for some reason. It's one of those classics. I read Animal Farm in high school, like, I was really into that. Um, and I thought I would right away read this, but I, not until recently. Um... And really, I kind of wanted to talk about this book, um, but more in reference to the post that I um, made on LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram a little while ago. Um, and so, so for some of you guys who don't like to read or for some of you guys who um, are looking for something a little bit more engaged, I think this would, this would be a good post. But it is kind of in reference to the post that I did um, on, uh, social media. So please go follow me on LinkedIn as Miriam Toko, uh, Instagram as Mrs. Miriam Toko, um, and IMO Thoughts, um, and Facebook, Miriam Toko. Um, and I will be linking my little things below. Um, and so to start off right away, um, I actually, this book reminded me so much of a book that I read in college called Swastika Night. And that book, I don't know if the author of that book stole the ideas from this book. I'm not actually sure which one was written when, but there were a lot of references to it that I was like, oh my gosh, this reminds me so much of Swastika Night. So, as a lot of you guys know, I am a Christian. I am a believer um, in the Lord Jesus, and I read my Bible, um, and I am, um, I do a lot of, um, my reflections and things in life and the things I encounter are in light of the things that I read in the Bible. So that frames my perspective. Um, my biblical worldview frames my perspective. Um, and then um, I kind of like, I always have that in light and foundation to whatever I'm reading, whatever I'm posting. I always try to have that as kind of like, okay, in the forefront of my mind. And so with books like Swastika Night, you would not expect me to read that book. Um, I think if a lot of people have, because it's one of those rare books, like I don't know where our teacher even got it from at the time, but um, it's one of those rare books that like you're like, what, Miriam would read that? No, I don't know, are you sure? Um, but I ended up actually, it was a requirement to read of course in the class, but I actually ended up really reading it and analyzing it even though I disagreed with so much of it and I also disagreed with a lot of the interpretation that a lot of teachers take and so this is the first thing I kind of want to talk about so 
with a book like in with a book like 1984 and Animal Farm, there's always this classical interpretation that teachers will tell you to take. Um, they might say one of the biggest things that I don't agree with is the author. So George Orwell, we have to talk about his background. A lot of teachers will tell you that you don't need to talk about an author's background, you don't need to study it, you can just take your interpretation from the book. No, that does not work that way. Um, I know that a lot of literature and English teachers out there will probably disagree with me, but you cannot not take the life of the author in light of the book because the problem with that is that it ends up creating this whole we can basically read whatever we want into the book or take out of it what we want um, without even thinking of what the author's life was like or studying what he did. So this book um, was inspired by communism, yes, and then it was also inspired by um, George Orwell's living in India. Um, and he um, did just he just saw a lot of different governments being formed. He did not like the whole British and Indian rule thing and, and um, the colonization in India and things like that. Um, and then he also just um, he was living at a very interesting time. And it was I think so. He wrote the book in the so I think the book the book got published in the fifties, right? Yes. No. So he lived in colonial India in 1903, right, so yes, so the book was um, was published in 1946 from what it looks like here, and then it was copyright renewed in 1977, okay, so he was living in a very interesting time, the whole post-World War II stuff that was happening, the whole um, just, well, I guess post-World War I then, and then post and then World War Two. But anyways, he was living during a whole like communistic rule, um, the whole like Nazi era, era and regime and things like that. So you have to take into account what he was living, um, what he was like, like what where he was living, what he was doing, um, and he was just definitely so. He wasn't a, so he was a socialist. He was definitely a classic everyday socialist. Um, but he also saw issues with certain issues with socialism, um, which is one of the reasons why I'm not a socialist because there's so many issues with being a socialist. But um, so he saw some of the issues, and one of those issues that he actually really digs into in this book is this whole idea of um, you basically can't have anything that's yours. You everything has to be divided within everyone. Everything has to be distributed equally or whatever. And you could totally see in this book that. He was. He did not agree with that because of the way that he portrayed it, um, and it was just this whole. I mean, I mean, socialism is a really does play a big part of that. So socialism, kind of, I like to think of it as it turns into communism on the extreme end, communism, if not communism, communism, on the extreme end, and so um, he was kind of like. So that part of it, he definitely like it criticized a lot in his book. Um, and the, the book really was, um, basically you have this entire government, um, and they are not only telling people that you have to distribute your wealth, but they're also controlling what people do. So you have these screens, everyone, whenever I mention I'm reading it, 1984, everyone's like, Oh, you mean the book about screens? <laughs> um, and so yes, there are screens in the book. There's a very big part of that. The whole quote, Big Brother is watching you, comes from this book. Um, and the screens are basically placed in every household, in every hallway, in anywhere that you go to at work, in schools, everywhere. So the screens are basically a way the government monitors you. A way that the government um, sees what you're doing hears what you're doing, which is a big deal in that, um, and you kind of basically like think that you can sneak past it at certain times, but you really can't. It basically takes over society, takes over people, takes over their minds. Um, the screens is a big part of the brainwashing that happens. Um, and there's this really famous quote, um, let me see if I, okay. Freedom is slavery, two and two make five, God is power. I'm going to repeat that again. Freedom is slavery, that is the capital's um, slogan. 
the government slogan basically that they put everywhere. Freedom is slavery. Two and two make five. God is power. Think about that. That is so contradictory. Basically, it's saying that you being enslaved to the system, that is freedom for you. That theme in that book is a whole entire different kind of brainwashing happens with that because they literally brainwash people into um, thinking that them being controlled by the government is actually freedom. Them actually listening to um, the, the government's regimes and um, whatever, taking sides on things or whatever is actually freedom not voicing your opinion is actually freedom. Is that crazy? Two and two make five. So basically, so this part, two and two make five, you might not think that that's as much of a big deal as the, the slogan beforehand, but that's actually a way bigger deal than anything else because they're basically saying, so in the book, so, and this happens towards the end, the, the end of the book more so than anything else, but in the book, basically this, there's this whole theme. So the, how the brainwashing happens is you tell someone something, over and over and over and over again. You make them watch things over and over and over again, and they end up believing it. So basically it's saying that if the government says, um, or the, the leaders of this time say, um, two and two make five, you have to believe that. And you, you not only just accept it, you have to believe it. Like within your heart of hearts, you have to believe it. Um, and so, and then the people who still have this idea that two and two equals four are ones who need to be brainwashed. More so, less words. I'm just summarizing everything for you guys. And God is power. Um, so basically, what's God to them at this time? It's power. So this government does not believe in a God, does not acknowledge an existence of God, does not acknowledge, the exi not a God, of God himself, I, the, there's only one true God, um, does not acknowledge the existence of religion or anything like that. It is a completely atheistic society. Um, and now, there really, I kind of wish there was more talk about that in this book. Um, there really wasn't that much talk about that. Um, I was kind of disappointed with that because um, the the author himself, not the author, I'm sorry, the the main character himself, he was an atheist, and so there wasn't really any talk about that. I think there was um, a scene in the book where um, he says, um, or somewhere in the government asks the main character, um, do you believe in God? And he said no, and that was the end of it. <laughs> That was pretty much it. They gave some historical things that had happened, like the Inquisition and the um, the Crusades, whatever, things like that, but that was about it. Like, there was not talk about really anything else. They talked about the Old Testament a little bit, but that was like, like two seconds. Um, so, um, the main thing with that, and I was kind of like hoping that um, it, they would talk more about God, Christianity, how they wiped out Christianity. No one talks about how they wiped out Christianity, um, which is kind of, I was really interested. I'm like, George Orwell didn't talk about that in this book for a reason. I don't know what that reason is. I can speculate, but I, I, they wiped out Christianity somehow. They really did, and there wasn't really much talk about that. Um, but I do think that a lot of that comes from the idea that God is power, that they're putting in this agenda in people's minds that basically, if I'm powerful enough, I am basically God, which is so warped, crazy, and twisted. Um, and it's just as twisted as two and two make five and freedom is slavery. Um, so this, this theme in the book, that and Big Brother is watching you, comes back repetitively. Um, and it's just a way that they that they brainwash people basically. So this book definitely counts as a dystopic novel. Um, and the main character's name is Winston Smith. Um, and we have um, so we have his girlfriend is also kind of a character in there. But really, the other character that doesn't come out until the end as one of the other main characters is O'Brien, which is a guy who pretends to be against the government but is actually completely working for the government. He pretends to be a rebel, a rebel, a rebel, but he's completely not. He actually, um, works in capturing Winston. Um, 
And so there's that whole thing in there. And then I also wanted to bring all of this. So I'm giving you guys that context. Bring it all back real quick. And um, just talk about how... So this book was written in the 50s. Well, late 40s, I guess. Early 50s. Published in the, in the 40s. In the late 40s, anyways. Um, but this book was written basically as a futuristic novel. So he wrote it. Um, it well, it was published in 1949. So... It was supposed to be like a like a a prediction of what's going to happen by the time we reach 1984, um, and everyone kind of refers to George Orwell as this like prophet or whatever. But um, I just wanted to say the fact that we are in 2019 and how prominent this book is right now. This book literally tells us what's happening in our society right now. There was so much in it that I was like, well, I don't know what you're talking about, but that's happening now. I don't know what you're talking about, it's happening now. And it's so interesting because it has this idea based, it gives you this idea that history repeats itself. History kind of does this weird thing where you think you're moving towards progress or whatever, but then you end up just going back to where you started. Human beings end up just going back to where they started over and over again. Guys, there's a reason why socialism failed. There's a reason why communism failed. There's a reason why all these things failed. Um, and really, the there was this amazing afterword um, of the book. And, ba and it was by um, Eric Frum. And I'm not sure if all of these books, if all of the 1984 books have it. But um, I love this quote at the end of it. Um, the hope we can realize, the hope can be realized only by recognizing, um, so 1984 teaches us the dangers with which all men are confronted today. The danger of a society of automatons who all have lost every trace of individual individuality, of love, of critical thought, and yet who will not be aware of it because of double think. And double think was this, um, idea of, in the book, double think was basically like, a way of contradicting your own mind. That was one of their methods of brainwashing people. Um, these people were smart. These people were not dumb, you know? They knew what they were doing. Books like or Orwell's are powerful warnings, and it would be most unfortunate if the reader smugly interpreted 1984 as another description of Stalinist bar barbarism, and if he does not see that it means us too. So, yeah, so it th does have this... Um, Really, I really like that quote because 1984 kind of does have this like connotation that um, basically doesn't apply. Really, no, that doesn't apply to us, but that like it's all about like this. We know when Stalin was president or whatever, um, but and that like it's all about communism, which is true. You know, you have to acknowledge that, but at the same time, you also have to acknowledge the fact that like it, the book, the book was very much important in our society now. Um, and the, the biggest thing with this is that they were using language to um, reform people's minds. This was a big thing in the book. They were using like literally changing language and they were making the English language kind of like come down into this. So taking away all the structure of the English language and making it as minimized as possible. Um, and the grammar was getting reduced, reduced, reduced. So changing the language, that was a big part of it. Um, and basically, there were, so double think plays into that. So when you change a language, you can't help but change the way people think too. That you can, if you study languages, I mean, when studying linguistics, that was kind of seen throughout different types of languages. Some languages express more, some languages express less. Some languages, I know for me, Arabic is a more emotional language, is how I like to look at it, than English is. Um, so, it, language plays a big part, I mean a big part in our communication. Um, and it also plays a big part in our critical thinking, and this is the last point before I say goodbye. It plays a big part in our critical thinking. So if you don't have the language to critically think about literature, history, um, religion, or whatever, then you, you can't really, if you think about it, you can't really think. You can't really think. So by reducing the language, they, they can't, I mean, people were not, 
like they took away individuality, they took away emotions, they took away so much by simply just reducing the structure of a language. Um, and so the critical thinking is a big aspect of it, and I really want to go into that, but it's 1959, and um, I, I should be going soon. Um, I don't want to like keep you guys here <laughs> forever. Um, so there's that, and then, um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty much all I really want to talk about. Um, be careful. Um, this book is a really good warning, um, and just saying that be careful be careful what you believe be careful what you watch be careful what you read be careful um and for me so this book kind of like about this whole like hopeless society kind of mentality for me my hope does not lie in our society does not lie in this book there's so many things that are happening in our society now socialistically speaking that i disagree with liberally speaking that i disagree with there are a lot of things that are happening that i just do not agree with um and one of them is actually about language, people arguing for changing the gender pronouns and languages or whatever. I'm completely against that. Um, but my hope at the end of the day does not even lie in whether people like do certain things or don't do certain things. Um, my hope lies in the fact that I'm a believer in the Lord Jesus and I believe he's going to come back one day. And I believe that when I die, I'm going to be with him in heaven. And so as messed up as this world is, as messed up as it's always been... Um, my hope does not lie in it and that for me reading this book brought that back it brought the need to tell people about the lord um so much more um and yeah so please subscribe and like um and comment um and if, if there's if there's something else you want to talk about in this book if you want me to dig into critical thinking or language more um just type that in below or really whatever and if you've read this book i'd love to hear your thoughts on it um thank you so much for watching and um have a good rest of your week um and bye